number what number this is. About the hundredth, I think, more or less, graduation. Average four year, yeah, about the uh, hundredth. We started um, the just the um, kilt tuxedo about um, I don't know fifteen plus years ago. Before that, it was black tie. And this is Scottish Highland black tie, but. The, uh, the idea is that um, this is the lifestyle of the, uh, that you're, you're not used to. Uh, it's all part of the oh, smell the leather, go look at big, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar houses or pounds or euros, whatever it is. Um, so you become accustomed to um, a different lifestyle. Same reason that you wear suits, in which now I've seen through three cycles we've gone through in the world of finance. Suits, casual, suits, casual, and we're back to suits. And uh, of course then we have the internet, which there are not too many suits in the internet, there's, there's some. But this is the beginning of your next phase of your life. Um, and. Um, well, this stuff costs money, for starters, so just that alone will change your life. Um, the, uh, the, the, the pictures that you will get based on tonight um, will be remembrance of uh, the culmination of a week that, um, that changed your life. But the operative word in the three sentences I just said is change, change, change. Uh, notwithstanding, I've had a lot of fun with a number of you from Poland and, uh, and uh, Zimbabwe, uh, there's really more, there's a few of you that are uh, uh, refugees and that uh, didn't uh, tell their story. I'm not going to tell them now, but um, I was talking to one of you after class, and um, so uh, we have more than one refugee in the room. Um, and, uh, but the idea is not to go back to your refugee lifestyle. That's, that's the operative thought process. And that'll be extremely difficult, but not impossible. Because default is strong. Default is strong. And the default meaning all the things we've talked about. And when your family and friends are pulling at you to do this and do that, and uh, you say no. Knowing, K-N-O-W, when to say no. That's one of the most difficult things for well, all of you. Uh, and that's why I left. And I'm a tough guy. If I left, the environment, rather than battle my family, uh, you know, and it wouldn't, wouldn't have been day in and day out. But I didn't. I didn't want to uh, have to go through that, knowing that I wanted to stay focused. And I didn't call it creating generational wealth in those days. That's only an afterthought. The words, you know, somebody else used, didn't even dawn on me. All I knew is I wanted to make a lot of fucking money. And from my uh, barrio background, the ghetto. Though we didn't know what millions were, we knew what a lot of fucking money was. But we didn't a lot of fucking money to us would have been ten grand. And uh, some of the guys I know, you know, hit people with bricks in the head to get the ten grand, and, uh, and you know, went to jail. And again, for the record, I have not gone to prison five times. I've been incarcerated in jail five times. Now, to me, that's a big difference. Maybe to some of the listening, that's not such a big difference. But I did not go to prison five times. But I certainly have rel relatives and friends that went to prison uh, and are still in prison. But uh, just for the record, to clean that up, a little bit of uh, history. Um, now, this um, group has two uh, alumni from the same school I went to. Uh, I'm a class of 71. We have a class of 93. And we have a class of 205. And, uh, in case you hadn't noticed, we're three very, very different people. Uh, coincidentally, we're all minorities, two Asian ladies and myself. And uh, we went to uh, the school at one time that I had explained about, which is now a very reputable school. But um, the, um, we had one accountant, CPA. We had one lawyer. And uh, we had one medical doctor. And the medical doctor back for the third time. And uh, by his own admission, you heard his story today. Although you've been talking to him all week, um, 
the um, uh, when we talk about the default and that picture about the two surgeons that were asleep there behind the I mean is priceless. You never think about that because you're, you're hoping they're all awake. But when the young doctors are working 18, 20, 30 hour shifts, they got to sleep someplace. And so they were sleeping behind the counter there. Guys, it's up to you now. You know, uh, I fill the week with cliches, sayings, examples, yada, yada. But it's up to you now, you know. It's either shit or get off the pot. You know, to be, uh, use a, uh, a crass vernacular. Uh, nobody can make you do it. I can get you to the trough. Uh, and I can even hold your head under the water for a little bit, but I can't hold your head under the water forever. And you've got to empty your teacup before you can fill it with QLA stuff. But congratulations, you're here. And um, I want to thank Sally, my lovely wife, for her lovely week that she was responsible for organizing. And I want to thank Kim, who's standing in the background here like a cat burglar uh, that uh, was responsible for a lot of this. But thank you very much, and have a safe trip back.